Good, so in this work, there is much more than just a protocol and proof for uh, four round uh, concurrent and malleable commitments. Let's see what I'm going to present. So first of all, there is a new notion. It's called weak non-malleability for commitments. And uh, in this notion, the man in the middle, the adversary, can commit only to well-formed messages. Then there is a new construction that uh, is a three-round concurrent non-malleable commitment scheme. And uh, it's based on the sub-exponentially secure one-to-one one-way functions, so it's a slightly strong assumption. But the nice part is that it can be instantiated with any three-round synchronous one-one weak non-malleable commitment where all these words synchronous one-one and weak mean that uh, it's a very small non-malleability flavor that we amplify to the concurrent non-malleability. So it's good that there are all those words in between uh, uh, three round and non-malleable commitment. Then there is a new notion. Again, this is for argument systems. It's called simulation witness indistinguishability. And uh, um, it's very interesting because uh, it's different in spirit from non-malleable zero knowledge, non-malleable WI, simulations on zero knowledge that are uh, well-known uh, non-malleability flavors for argument systems. So the, the reason we need this new notion is that the previous notions turned out to be insufficient for our final goal. We can construct, moreover, um, such a tool, the, the SIMWI argument system from one-way functions in just four rounds, one many. In particular, one many means that the man in the middle can play with multiple verifiers. And finally, that's uh, the title of the, of the paper. Um, we will put pieces together to get a four-round concurrent non-malleable commitment scheme. But the interesting part is that our construction is absolutely modular, making use of these two tools together. So the final construction is simple because we use these two tools in a modular way. That's very important because if you have multiple instantiations of these tools, the moment one instantiation dies because there is a bug, our result still stands because you can instantiate it in multiple ways. Um, anyway, it's known how to implement the, this tool under one-way functions, and we implemented in this work this tool with one-way functions, so the final result only requires a one-way function. Okay, you all know what a commitment scheme is, otherwise you will be sitting in the other room uh, with the title of my talk. So, uh, so let's uh, go directly to the non-malleability game. So we have uh, an adversary that uh, um, will get a commitment of either M0 or M1, he doesn't know, and he tries to compute a commitment of a message M prime that is related to MB. Okay, and there is a distinguisher that will get the committed message of the adversary in the clear the view of the conversation, and we'll try uh, to output to, to guess B. Okay, that's the goal of the adversary and distinction. And very important, in general, with a non-malleable commitment scheme, the adversary might commit to a bogus message, a message that cannot be opened at all. It's part of his power, he can do that. Um, this is uh, the one-many non-malleability, where the man in the middle can play with multiple verifiers. And this is the many, many case, it's the concurrent malleable uh, commitment definition where the man in the middle is allowed to play with multiple senders and multiple verifiers. So there is a nice theorem of Lin et al. They prove that uh, you can just focus on one many non-malleability because uh, any one many non-malleable commitment scheme is also a many, many non-malleable commitment scheme. So we will mainly focus on this in this talk. Okay, no, now let's, uh, so there, there is a lot that I have to tell you. So let's start with a, a big problem, the, the problem that we had to solve in this work. If you have many rounds, more than four, and you want to design a, com a non-malleable commitment scheme, you have the following chance. You can kind of make some rewinds on the left, trying, I don't know, in a reduction, in the security proof, to simulate uh, something, right? To basically send some bogus message to the man in the middle, to extract something on the left. And moreover, you can also do it in the other session on the right. Because you have many rounds, therefore, the rewind that you play on the left does not interfere with the rewind that you play on the right, okay? This is possible, but you need more rounds, more than four. 
The problem of breaking the uh, more than four round barrier, the multiple slot barrier, was solved by Goyal et al. in 2014, showing a no malleable commitment scheme in just four rounds from one way functions. So this required significantly new techniques to break this barrier. But it was limited to, one, to the one one case where the man in the middle plays with one sender and one receiver. Okay? So in this work, we break the multiple slot barrier, having just a four round constructions with full concurrency where there are multiple senders and multiple receivers. This is the state of the art after our work. So you can see that uh, no malleability for commitments is a very old problem. Uh, it has been studied trying to improve the round complexity over the years, the complex assumptions, the concurrency, and we end up having uh, some very nice properties because it is concurrent, we need the minimal assumptions, it's just one with functions, and we do it in four rounds. And then there is, and it's in 2016 because our work was online already in 2016. Um, and then we have also the three round construction that is based on some exponentially secure one to one with functions, but the important thing is that it's a combination of these two tools. So therefore, can be also instantiated in different ways if there is a bug in, uh, in one of the instantiations. You, you know, if you take any, m many of these papers, maybe they have a bug, then everything is over, right? Okay, there can be a bug also in our paper, but the relevant part is that if the bug is in the way we combine things, it is a bug. If it's a bug in the underlying uh, sub-protocol, then we are fine as long as there are more instantiations of the sub-protocol because you can use another one, okay? So a, a big effort that we made in this work is to have all these theorems that we have, all these constructions, both of them, that are modular combination of two uh, weaker flavors of normality. There is follow-up work this year, so new work, that uh, uh, does not improve our work. Still, it uh, improves some dimension, but not some other dimension. It's worse on some other dimension. In particular, on the complexity assumptions, the new papers that are appearing in Fox or are in print, uh, they, have, uh, um, they, don't, they have stronger uh, complexity assumptions or they are based on number theoretic assumptions, okay? Okay, so let's start now with that, that uh, sequence of uh, uh, results. So we start with weak normalability. What is weak normalability? For commitments, it's a game in which the man in the middle is forced to commit on the right, so this is the transcript of the conversation, to a, to a message that can be successfully opened later. Okay? He cannot commit in the sense of sending bogus messages and therefore later he cannot open at all. It's a restriction, right? You might say, why do you have this restriction? It's useless. Because in the real world he can do whatever he wants. That's true, but indeed my goal is to use this as a building block to construct full-fledged normalability. And it's good to start with some weak flavor normalability because it's easier to achieve. In particular, you can achieve it under different assumptions, different constructions, and then you build on top of it. That's what we do in this work. So there was a previous uh, notion uh, similar in spirit uh, of uh, Goyal that is called uh, normality with respect to replacement, but it's formalized differently from what uh, I just discussed. Okay, so uh, we are done with this uh, uh, new notion. And now let's go to step two, is the construction of three round concurrent normalable commitments from three round, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the point here, as I told you, is that we have this result based on this tool, three round synchronous one one weak normalable commitment. Interestingly, for this tool, for instance, there are two instantiations known, completely different. So there are two papers, we are not part of these papers, but there are two different, completely different ways to construct this tool, okay, from one, one, one to one one way functions. So if one of them one day, unfortunately, dies because of a bug, our result stands because we can instantiate everything with other result, okay? It's a benefit of uh, the modular construction that we have. Okay, for the, for the actual construction, how we build on top of this tool to get a one-one, uh, using also one-to-one sub-exponentially secure only functions, getting a three-round concurrent malleable commitment scheme, you can see the full version. I don't have time because there is uh, more interesting stuff that I want to present in the next minutes. 
Okay, let's continue. Then we are done with step two. And we are now going towards step three. Uh, so the final goal is to show concurrent malleable commitments. So, so why am I going to talk about argument systems? So I'll introduce now the reason why we introduce a new notion, of new, a new non-malleability flavor for argument systems. So this is a generic uh, man-in-the-middle attack where there are multiple senders, multiple receivers, and the man-in-the-middle can commit to bogus messages or to well-formed messages. And there is a construction very important of Goyal et al. in Fox 2014 that we have constructed in this way. First, they have a component that is secure against a weak man in the middle. As you can see, all commitments here on the right are well formed. There is no bogus message because uh, this is the definition of weak normalability that I explained to you a few slides ago. Okay, and they have a very important construction. They construct this building block. So against a weak man in the middle, they have a four round construction that is concurrent, moreover, and based only on one way functions. Okay? Good. What do they do then? They notice, okay, if the problem of this construction is that the man in the middle can commit to, uh, it's, it's forced to commit to well formed messages only, and we want to remove this uh, limit. We can add a zero knowledge argument where uh, the man in the middle must prove that the committed message is good, okay? By adding this, this uh, um, um, argument of knowledge, then it's clear that here all commitments are well formed. Otherwise, you violate, violate the soundness of the argument of knowledge. Okay, good. So putting these two blocks together, they have an eight round construction of a concurrent malleable commitment scheme against fully concurrent malicious adversary. Okay, moreover, this tool is also public coin. This will be useful later. But here we, ha we have eight rounds. So we are still far from the barrier. What we want is four rounds because four rounds means you have only one slot and it's extremely tough to resolve the problem. Okay, so this is uh, what we can do to uh, have a four round construction. Okay, let's not play the two sub protocols sequentially. Let's play them in parallel and you get the four-round construction, right? Um, but let's see, does it work? Can, can we really do such things instead of playing sequentially, we play in parallel and everything is successful? Let's see, the man in the middle could start playing his attack with two red sessions, for instance. So he played the first three rounds on the left, first three rounds on the right. Then there is the fourth round coming from the sender and the man in the middle, man in the middle can give a look not at the weak non-malleable commitment that has a non-malleability flavor inside because it's in the, way, in the word non-malleable. But here, this, this is just a zero knowledge argument of knowledge has nothing to do with non-malleability. It's extremely malleable. The man in the middle might be able to touch this, this message and uh, to understand that he can complete one session if here there is really M1. Uh, M0, and to complete the other session, okay, M1, and another session if here there is M0, okay? So you can tr try to mole and to complete a session on the right depending on the message that is not in the weak normalable commitment, but that is used as a witness in the zero knowledge, argument of knowledge. Okay, and you can just abort the other one. In this example, he completed this session and he aborted this one. Okay, so, but okay, you can say, but uh, okay, if I have a proof, uh, I don't care. I mean, there would be a way to uh, translate this adversary in a reduction that breaks a primitive. Well, let's see, let's uh, go back again. Here it, uh, we had um, um, the weak normalable commitment, the zero knowledge argument of knowledge. In a sequence of hybrids, you will end up with uh, using the simulator on the right. That's why it's zero knowledge. Otherwise, uh, you wouldn't need zero knowledge. And the man in the middle now, will not mold anymore. When he understands that there is a simulator on the left, he will just complete a random session, okay? So we have the man in the middle that in the real game, he molds, he actually completes a session related to the committed message on the left. But when you start uh, uh, in a security proof uh, through the hybrid switch to the simulator, the man in the middle might just not mold anymore and you don't reach a contradiction. So it's precisely the point in which you should, in your security proof, 
make advantage of this because the man in the middle is essentially killing the simulator, right? Because if you put the real prover, he moles. If you put the simulator, he does not mole anymore. Very good, so reduction to the zero knowledge. Let's do the reduction. Okay. So we have uh, on the left a challenger that is either a prover or a simulator of zero knowledge. And uh, we make use of this man in the middle that is able to translate the fact that this is pro either, either comes from a prover or from the simulator and completing here either the commitment of a message related to the, to, uh, to, to the session on the left or completely unrelated. Okay, but the problem is that if there is a committed message here and you want to see it, you have to extract it. In order to extract it, you have to rewind. If you rewind, the man in the middle will ask to play on the left again, but you have a challenger here. Having the challenger means that you cannot ask the challenger to replay the fourth round, you have to play it on your own. And how you cannot play it on your own in zero knowledge if you don't have the witness, okay? So if there is a challenger here playing uh, four rounds and you ask to, uh, you want to play on your own a, a valid fourth round, you cannot. This means that you are stuck in the reduction, okay? So it's not so easy. You cannot, uh, what's, uh, what we know now, it's, it's not so easy to put together um, in parallel rather than sequentially these two sub-protocols. Okay, that's uh, the, the big problem that I announced already before. When you have only one slot, it's very tough. If you extract on the right, you are going to disturb the session on the left in particular the reduction. If there is a challenger, you are rewinding the challenger. So that's the big complication. Fortunately, as there is already a solution. So Goyal et al. solved this problem. They have a better zero knowledge argument of knowledge, a special one, so not just any. You play with a special zero knowledge argument of knowledge that is kind of resilient to some rewinds, okay? So, with this spe special tool that they constructed, they managed to get a four-round uh, construction under one-way function, but these limited rewinds that can be tolerated by this, uh, this zero-knowledge argument of knowledge is completely insufficient when you have multiple verifiers, because then you have to extract everywhere, and therefore there, are, uh, there is an uncontrolled number of rewinds. This, therefore, their strategy dies, and they have only one-one normalability. Okay, so the open question that we solve in this work is to construct concurrent normalable commitments just with one-way functions with four rounds and one, therefore one slot only. This requires new techniques. Okay, so all this discussion motivated the fact that we need uh, something better than just a zero knowledge argument of knowledge and that's precisely the, the notion that we construct. There are some other approaches possible, one is uh, just use statistical zero knowledge argument of knowledge. This will the stop the man in the middle from looking at the zero knowledge argument of knowledge, understanding the witness and doing something because the witness is completely hidden. You, it's, uh, the simulation is statistical. Uh, this, this will work actually, but unfortunately it requires collision resistance hash functions, so much stronger complexity assumption. If you, you might think of uh, using a non-malleable zero knowledge, a much stronger uh, zero knowledge definition, but uh, first of all, there was no uh, construction in four rounds, one many, uh, until, until a new work that uh, we did this year. Uh, and second, it doesn't work. It's not enough because in non-malleable zero knowledge, there is nothing about the distribution of the messages that are uh, used, that, of the distribution of the witnesses that is, corresponds to the messages here, that is the real uh, Normalability, uh, the real point in which the man in the middle is attacking. It's attacking on the message used by the prover in the zero knowledge, which is the witness. And normalable zero knowledge has nothing to do with distribution of the witness. Just assumes that the simulator will figure out, will, will extract a witness. Okay, so it remains, uh, despite the state of the art, if you want to get this result, uh, there is an open question that must be solved. Okay, so this was their approach. Successfully, they combined these two tools to get a one-one malleable commitment scheme. And our approach is different. We replace this component with uh, a tool that is a simulation witness independent argument of knowledge. 
with this tool, we get four unconcurrent normal labor commitments. Okay, both tools can be instantiated under one-way functions, so we are fine. The final result is under one-way functions. And we are going to see this new notion. So it's an argument system that has a non-maliability flavor. So in the real game, you have, as usual, the man in the middle playing on the left and on the right. This is the one-many definition, so there are many uh, verifiers. And uh, the man in the middle will uh, uh, ask the prover to complete uh, the protocol uh, on the left, and he will complete then uh, the argument systems on the right. Okay, and now you have uh, a distribution of the uh, witnesses corresponding to the theorems proven on the right by the man in the middle. Uh, because I'm assuming here that uh, for every uh, instance there is just one witness. So therefore, it's well defined when you have the theorems on the right, the, the distribution of the witnesses encoded in the proof on the right. Okay, and this is the real game. Then we have a simulated game where, of course, since it's simulated, there is no witness played at all on the left because there is a simulator. And uh, we still have some uh, uh, theorems proven on the right. And you take the distribution of the witnesses that are on the right. Okay, so now the goal is that whatever is using here, the distribution of the witnesses that are on the right, we want them to be ind uh, indistinguishable uh, from the previous case where there was a witness. Okay, so this is the distinguishability of the two games. So this is the definition of simulation WI. So if you play with the prover or with the simulator, the distribution of the witnesses encoded in the proofs given by the man in the middle on the right does not change. Okay, this is informally what it means. And um, informally, uh, we discuss in the paper that this definition has uh, nothing to do with simulation extractability, simulation soundness, and non-malleable non witness indistinguishability. Okay, good. Interestingly, we can construct this uh, uh, tool with one-way functions all in four rounds, but you might ask again, why? You have only one slot, so you might have the same issues. First observation, this notion does not require the simulator to be also an extractor on the right. This helps, okay? It's uh, something that simplifies. Second, we have a protocol design technique, new, that Instead of using, for instance, a WI argument of knowledge that uh, can be problematic in a security proof because of the rewind that will uh, require to rewind the challenger, we actually will use only components that have non-interactive challengers. A non-interactive challenger does not suffer if there is a rewind. So this is the main protocol design technique that allows us to pass this uh, uh, four-round barrier, the multiple slot barrier. Moreover, there is also an interesting new proof approach technique that, we, that is in particular in our security proof, and it's crucial for us, uh, and a hybrid in which, in the same hybrid, we play in the same argument system, both with the prover and with the, the simulator of a special knowledge verified zero knowledge proof. Okay, both prover and simulator in the same experiment, in the same session. Okay, this is also something uh, uh, apparently new for us at least, and uh, it's fundamental, so it's something very important for us to reach the final result. We don't know how to do it without this technique, and for instance, this, this gives you the flavor of the difference with simulation soundness, because simulation soundness is about uh, simulating a uh, false theorem, but if it's a false theorem, I cannot switch between simulator and prover, because it's false. There is no prover to prove a false theorem. Okay, so in print you can see all the details, but here it's really the insight of uh, the, the crucial observation and uh, the uh, new technique that we use and uh, what we put in the proof. Okay, still have some time. Good, so now that we have this important, important component, we can put together simulation WI and weak normalability. And now the proof is really smooth. Why? Because you have uh, this was the previous, uh, the previous case where he is the man in the middle is attacking the, 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 the zero knowledge, mauling uh, according to the zero knowledge, so changing the witness that is on the right according, and therefore the message according to the zero knowledge. But simulation WI, and this was the previous case, simulation WI completely resolves this problem because it's a, a guarantee of simulation WI that when you switch from prover to simulator, the man in the middle does not change the messages encoded on the right, the witnesses that are the messages encoded on the right. And therefore, we can then also play a reduction to the weak normal labor commitment. Don't have time to show you also this reduction, but now it's 
things are easy, and there is also a final thing. So the reduction is also simplified by the fact that the weak non-malleable commitment is public coin. And I can conclude now. Um, so we broke the multiple slot barrier for concurrent non-malleable commitments using minimal complexity assumptions. And we have a three and four run constructions, in particular making modular use of sub-protocols. So this is very useful because it admits multiple instantiations. Um, we have a new notion for argument system with uh, maybe with the new applications in future for uh, the, because of the non-malleability flavor. And also it's interesting that we show new protocol design and proof approach techniques. Thank you very much for your attention.